What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today I'm going to show you the processes I take to build baseball and softball specific explosive power. Make sure you stay tuned. Check this one out. Anytime you're talking about building explosive power that's going to transfer to the baseball and softball field, it's important to note that it takes a very specific program. In today's generation, everybody is looking for that instant gratification, you know, those top two, top three exercises that is going to, you know, increase my bat speed. And I'll admit, I've made those videos in the past too, all right, but that's without context. Those are all good exercises every time somebody does that or recommends it. However, to get the most out of it and to build your power to your max potential, it takes a very structured, a very long approach. So with that being said, every time we get a new athlete and we're trying to build up his explosive power, you know, build up his throwing velocity, exit velo, you know, build speed, this is the pyramid that we go off of. So we assess them in each individual category of this pyramid. As you see, the base is our relative strength, okay? That's how much strength can you produce based off your body weight, all right? Then we'll go up to power, then we'll go to bridge to sports, so getting what we do to the weight room to transfer over to the baseball or softball field. And then we move on to our skill work, okay? Those are our throwing lessons, our hitting lessons, etc. So here we're focused on building physiological adaptations then right here, we start to get a little more sports specific. So for the base, for relative strength, we're looking at our big compound movements. We're gonna do these at a high intensity and low volume. And here's where our programming comes into play, mostly when we're trying to build this relative strength, okay? Whether it's if you're doing conjugate training, okay? Here, we like to do triphasic training when we do this relative strength. So pick an exercise, all right? A squat, a bench, a split squat, okay? For that split squat, what we're gonna do to build this relative strength is we're gonna go two or three weeks of eccentric training, then we're gonna go two to three weeks of isometric training, and then we're gonna go two to three weeks of heavier concentric training. And that's all gonna depend on the athlete where we spend in that phase, right? If we get a kid in here, you know, he's just really, really strong, right? Maybe we'll tailor that three weeks back to one week of eccentrics, one week of isometrics, and then roll concentric to build because he's already has a good foundation. Next is power, right? It's not enough just to be strong in this sport. We have to be powerful. So now we have to bridge this relative strength that we have built, whether that's, you know, the first 14 weeks of a program, 10, 12, depending on the person, we have to bridge that to power. And what is power? The power is the rate at which you can produce that strength. So now instead of our slower, heavier exercises, we're going to have to move them fast. So this is where velocity-based training comes into play. So rather than dictating intensity and volume based on sets and reps, it's all on bar velocity. So now we'll go, you know, with our VBT tracker, maybe we'll go four to six sets keeping that bar over 0.8 to one meters per second, and then we'll cut the set when that bar velocity dips under. That makes sure that we're building that power adaptation. So we're having that strength at a higher contraction velocity, right? You think of the swing, you think of the throw, how fast that happens under a millisecond. So to think if you're doing a split squat and it takes you three seconds to get to the top of the rep, there's no way that that strength is going to transfer into the power you need to swing a bat or to throw. Force and power is very specific to the speed that you train it at. So now since we've built our relative strength, we've built our power, now it's time to get that bridge to sport. So this is where our sport specific training comes into play, right? If you throw that term around to another professional in the industry, they're going to cringe. That's just because that word's overused you know, oversaturated and guys get really carried away with it. However, baseball and softball is so skill dominant, you need to get that bridge to sport, so you need to train sport specific, okay? So in order to get this bridge to sport, so to get our power to transfer over to the baseball field, we have to do med ball throws at a very specific position, you know, getting wide, acting like we're swinging, making sure our lower half is working the same way. 
We no. do sprint drills off command. We do no. strength training off command because baseball is such a reactive sport. We have to do things. We not only have to produce force, we have to do it off command. That's where our lateral plyometrics come into play, where we're producing proper lateral force that transfers into throwing mechanics, hitting mechanics, etc. So now since we bridge that to sport, we hit our sport specific training, okay? The top, the very top of the pyramid is our skills training. So these are our hitting lessons. These are our weighted ball throwing programs, our long toss throwing programs. So it's very important that you understand in order to get better on the field from what we're doing in the weight room, you have to knock off each tier. There's prerequisites to this, right? If you try to hit power work before you build a base of relative strength, your ceiling is only so high. You're gonna get better at first, right? But you're gonna plateau and hit a ceiling. Same thing with our bridge to sport. If you're just doing your sport specific exercises before you've transferred your relative strength to power, you're only gonna reach a certain level of adaptation. Sure, you'll hit you know, some med ball throws and maybe start hitting a ball you know, half a mile an hour faster to a mile an hour faster, but you're never gonna reach a higher ceiling. You need to bring your ceiling up. And then this is the worst one. If you're just doing skill work without any physiological, building any physiological adaptations, your ceiling is very, very low. Okay, right, for instance, okay, you have two players. We'll call them, you know, 15 year old kids. This 15 year old kid, okay, that builds his relative strength, builds his power, and then builds his bridge to sport, he's following a structured physiological program, right? His ceiling is just gonna increase, okay? His ceiling is just getting up there. Don't mind my handwriting. So this 15 year old kid has built his ceiling this high, okay? Then a kid that just does skill work, he flips this pyramid upside down, doesn't do any relative strength, any power, any bridge to sport, his ceiling is going to be here, right? However, since this guy's not really making a priority on his skill work yet, right off the bat, he's not gonna receive the same initial gains as you know, little Johnny here that is just doing skill work. So little Johnny's gonna reach that low ceiling a little bit quicker, hence, all right, I gained four miles an hour on my pull down velocity in six weeks, okay? Little Johnny is going to stay at that ceiling. Maybe he went from 77 to 82 or something. He's gonna stay at that 82 until his physiological adaptations pick up, until his relative strength picks up, until his power, and until we start doing sports specific exercises. Maybe he'll hit puberty and go from 82 to 84, right? Without any, you know, heavy stimulation work, any power work, right? However, this little Johnny here that has been putting in the time, hitting his relative strength, power bridge to sport, his ceiling's all the way up here. So now when he hits his skill work, he may have 95 in the tank, right? So he's slowly, gradually, slowly doing, you know, if he's doing a plyo ball program, right? He's slowly making incremental gains. So he could go from 77 to 82. Oh, now he's at 84. Oh, now he's at 94. Oh, now he's at 95. So all we're doing through this is putting our ceiling a little bit higher. That's through each segment of this pyramid, right? Relative strength itself is not gonna transfer to the baseball field, right? It's gonna transfer to power. Power itself will not transfer to the baseball field without sport-specific training, training that specific. And then that sport-specific training, it will not transfer to the baseball field if your skill work's lacking, if you can't hit a curveball, if you don't know the mental side, if you don't know, hey, I'm sitting on pitches. You've seen five o'clock hitters every day, right? They can hit a ball 115 miles an hour off the tee, but they're allergic to spin. This is where that skill work comes into play. So without each piece of this pyramid lining up exactly like base, other, other, top, right? Your ceiling is only so high you're gonna run into plateaus. Another thing too, we see it all the time, is kids just doing these plyo ball throwing programs without a um, base, or just doing throwing programs without a good base, swinging every day, taking all these swings without a good base, 
the risk for injury is a lot higher because of pattern overload. Weak things break. If you're not strong, that's when injuries are gonna come into play. So my overall advice to you is you cannot be looking for that instant gratification. You know what I'm saying? You have to look at yourself right now. All right, I'm a sophomore in high school, okay? I need to start a very strategic strength and conditioning program to make sure I get the most out of my skill work, okay? You need to bring your ceiling up before you start hitting, you know, all your weighted ball throwing programs, your overload, underload bat programs, your, you know, spending all this time with the hitting coach, you know, when your bat speed is only 15 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an exaggeration, but you just need to build a base before you go on. There's prerequisites you need to hit in order to get the most out of your career. So, and that takes a structured program. So with that being said, make sure you're following a structured program that's gonna build up your relative strength, bridge it to power, bridge it to sport, and then you can go ahead and hit your skill work, okay? If you're lost, not sure what to do, not sure how to put together your own program, you know, we have several available, just like our new baseball off-season program. It's perfect for the fall and going into this winter to make sure you're doing everything right by first at bat during the spring. You can get a seven day free trial right now in the link in the description and then hopefully stay on through the remainder of the program and you're going to start to see those incremental gains and adaptations for spring. And always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week, so do me a favor and subscribe. I appreciate you. Catch you next week.